Hey guys, I'm just trying to analyze some of the data from Garangoza National Park. Some of the field notes that Dr. Poole took on the elephants. Let me see if you can figure out the same thing I figured out looking at this data. Scientists get a lot of information from experiments and observations. We like to organize that information in lots of different ways. We put them in tables and graphs and charts. Dr. Poole put her information into an ethogram. That's where you use the symbols or uh, different letters in order to represent the different behaviors for the elephant. I've taken her field notes and put it into a graph. Let's see if we can't figure out some uh, of the behavior, the group behaviors from elephants looking at this graph. You'll notice that my graph is called a histogram. This is on your worksheet that goes along with the class. If you haven't pulled that up, take a second and pull that worksheet up so you can follow along what I'm doing with this graph. A histogram really talks about how often different behaviors happen. So in the amount of time that Dr. Poole observed her elephants, she got to see those elephants do different behaviors. She kept track of it in an ethogram. We then look at this information in a graph. If you look here, this is called a column graph or a bar graph. I actually put information from both elephants on the graph. Can you figure out which elephant is the blue and which elephant is the red? Along the bottom of the graph, are the symbols that Dr. Poole used to signify which behaviors the elephant has. For instance, an E stands for eating. You'll remember that there's a table at the top of your document here that tells you exactly what those symbols actually mean. I basically just looked at her field notes, counted up how many E's there were, and then put that number into my graph. So for the elephant A, which in my chart is the blue line, that elephant ate five times in the amount of time that she watched, where elephant B ate six times. You can see that along the up and down axis, we call that the y-axis of the graph, that just tells you how often this happened, five and six times. You'll see that for drinking, both elephants drank two times. So all the way down this chart, it shows which elephants are doing which behaviors. See if you can't go through the rest of this document, at least the questions underneath this chart, and kind of come up with some patterns that you can see in the data. Scientists like to look at data and see if we can't figure out patterns so we can make decisions and make predictions about what's going on. Can you figure out which one of these elephants is the matriarch or the head of the group? Which one might be a young bull or a young kid that's uh, hanging out with the older elephants? These are the kinds of things we can find from the data if we look for patterns. Go ahead and take some time to answer those questions, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about some stuff. Elephants are very social animals. Let's learn a little bit more about uh, elephants and how they work together in groups. I'm going to read to you a little bit about what an elephant does uh, in their groups. The social lives of elephants. A herd of elephants. Elephant herds are well known for their complex structure. Within the herd can only be one or more family groups. A family is usually made up of a mother, her sisters, her daughters, and their babies, or calves. Males, or bulls, live with the herd until they're about 13 years old, and then they join other males or roam out on their own. Sometimes, herds of elephants combine with other herds to form even larger clans. Elephants are very affectionate with their friends and family members and form strong bonds that can last a lifetime. The matriarch is the oldest and most respected female in the herd, and usually the largest also. She decides when to move, how fast to travel, and when to stop. The herd stays close to the matriarch and she defends it from predators. 
The matriarch teaches her daughters how to care for their babies. And all of the adult females in the herd teach the younger elephants how to eat and behave. Animals live in groups for many reasons. One benefit for elephants is that members of a herd can take care of each other. When a calf is born, the herd raises it. When an elephant is sick or injured, the herd cares for it. Another advantage of living in a group is that elephants help each other find enough food to fuel their massive bodies. Elephants can eat more than 300 pounds of food in a day, and they spend about 16 hours a day eating. Living in a group also provides safety in numbers. When danger is near, elephants often form a defensive circle, with the youngest elephants in the middle and the adult females facing outwards. No predator wants to mess with a circle of elephants. Here's some really cool facts about an elephant that I learned. I think they're kind of fun to think about. Did you know that African elephants are the largest land animals on Earth? A trunk is actually an elephant's nose. It's used for smelling, breathing, drinking, trumpeting, caressing, greeting, and also for grabbing things, especially food. When elephants swim, they use their trunks as snorkels. After drinking at a watering hole, an elephant will sometimes take a mud bath or spray itself with water to cool off and remove biting insects. An elephant's ears are filled with blood vessels. By holding their ears out in the wind and flapping them, the ears radiate excess heat, which keeps the elephant's whole body cooler. Elephants use their tusks to dig for food and water, and to strip bark from trees. Males use their tusks to battle one another. Elephants have a sophisticated system of communication, involving both sounds and gestures, movements that express meanings. Because people in some places value ivory, elephants are being poached or illegally killed just for the tusks that are made out of ivory. Wow, elephants are really cool things. <laughs> wow, elephants are really cool animals. They live together in herds and families and clans, all to help themselves survive. What other animals do you know that live together and help to help them, each other survive? There's a book to read uh, as a link on your worksheet. Go ahead and read through that book and see if you can figure out other ways in which animals work together in groups in order to survive. There's some questions afterwards just to see if uh, what you're thinking about it. Good luck. If you have any questions, please contact your teacher or you can contact me and I will see you soon.